I have another kit to review today, the Sturmpanzer L Befehls Panzer, which is the converted vehicle of the Panzer 4G. Uh, this one again was sent to me by Kitmaker Network and sent to them by Dragon USA. Uh, this is a strange one. It's basically a command from Bear. That's all we gotta really say. Um, and then the fact that it was, I believe, converted from a G, Panzer 4G is, I'm assuming, different than other Brumbears. So, it has Zimmerit, and I'm not sure where it falls into the early mid type thing, because the, the family tree of this thing was in 08, there was the initial tooling of it, which was a mid, uh, 6460. And then there haven't been that many. There was an early in 08 as well, 6497, and then in 09, they just started to redo them. So there was a mid Zim 6500, and then in 2010 there was an early with Zim 6596. So that's just a mid, an early, a mid with Zim, an early with Zim, and then this guy. So it's a pretty short um, run as far as what Dragon normally does. So uh, the only things I can see different in this one than like the previous one before is that it's like just has DS. That other one had command tank capability. It's in the kit, I think. So. I'll check her out. Um, two schemes. A uh, little funky. but. And then on here, obviously they say this like it's a good thing. And then everything else seems very, very similar to any previous brown bears that I've seen, at least the Zimmer one. So, okay. So the instructions have quite a bit of blue on here. I'm going to assume by looking at this that we've got a few Panzer IV sprues in here, um, and that would be the reason for the majority of the blue parts. So the suspension will be of the simpler type, which I would assume, I don't think they ever do that super kit thing anymore with its upper rubber. So three-piece wheels, uh, two-piece idler, two-piece return rollers. The tub seems about standard. You got a separate front plate and lower rear and rear plate. And we've got an option here for, I'm assuming, some kind of add on thing. Alright, so the final drives, the the stations for the bogies and the bump stops, this stuff's all pretty good. It's not too complicated. The bump stops being two pieces is fine. Nothing too fiddly. Um, this has always kind of annoyed me. On the, yeah. So there's like this two piece armored cover for the final drive or a one piece. And one of them you have to add rivets to. I think they're still doing it that way. The uh, earlier type of Panzer IV exhaust, which is a pretty cool assembly. These are the simpler form of idler adjusters. The, there's a very complicated version of that on previous kits. Nothing to write home about there. Pretty simple. We've got PE for that thing. Not even honestly sure what that is. I think it has to do with covering the, the vents on the side. Not sure what they're talking about here. Standard jack, little fiddly PE there. This thing can be a pain. Then we get these things. That's about how those are always done. It's a nice little assembly. Let me cut something off of this guy. So there's the engine deck and the roof by the look of it. Scissors periscope, a styrene version of a toolbox. There's a PE version of this type of box and some of the uh, premium the Ferdinand, I think. It's very similar looking anyway. Here we have antennas, which I tend not to put on at that stage because I'll break them off. Normally right when I get into priming, it'd be like, snap. So. Ooh, I don't like the look of this. Can I cut something off? But everything seems pretty simple, for Dragon anyway. Not a lot going on. Some small bits, but not a, not a ton of little assemblies 
going on, just a few little pieces, and, at least on this part. But it is a pretty simple vehicle. Then, yeah, I've heard this. I haven't actually looked at these instructions yet, but I've heard there was a pretty complete interior, at least in the gun. So, this, no, nothing there. All right, so they're having you put all this stuff together with this stuff. Okay, I was confused by that, because that happens here. It's a little backwards, Dragon. Yeah, that seems pretty complicated. Not too bad, though. I bet you it'll look really nice and you'll never see it. But that's comparable with a lot of the gun assembly they've seen. But unlike a Storm Tiger, I don't think there's enough of a large hatch for loading in this thing to see any of this. That's kind of intense. It's a lot like the Stug 3 assembly. This goes into the floor and then this is all the mountings for it. So yeah, actually that's kind of what I'd compare it to would be the Stug 3 gun. The uh, interior, anyway. Very simple looking when it's done. So in sort of the traditional manner, superstructure goes into fender, so that's a little different. Then fenders and superstructure go down on top of this once the gun is mounted and the engine deck is. So that's kind of, I wonder if how seamless that happens, or if that can go wrong. Um, this is, feels like this is the leftover diagram from when they had magic tracks because they, they don't and you can't get sagged like this. So they're telling you without side skirts it looks like that and with them you need to put on the shirts and brackets which I've actually never done Dragon's metal shirts in before so I will for sure. Maybe on this one? Maybe on a Stug? Don't know how soon I'll be getting to building this. Marking options are the same to um, German Brumbear in 1944. It didn't say where, it just says when. So in the box, we've got DS tracks. That's two in a row. And unfortunately, um, that is, again, the natural lay of that track. I pulled one out. We've got some bent guide horns right there. They are hollow, but they're bent. See? No good. They're not that many bent, but enough that it still bugs me. Um, if you use the Schurzen on this, it'd be easier to use these tracks. Otherwise, uh, Panzer IVs have a very particular sag. There are certain tanks that have like an iconic sag, and I think Panzer IVs are definitely one of them. So I'm not real thrilled with this. Then we've got this stuff, um, very cool scale metal Schutzen plates, that one's popping out already. Um, there's not much bad to say about that. Now let's see if they have, they've got holes in them. These are different than the kind that I'm used to, by the way when the Light reflects back in the camera until he flips out the color on my footage, so sorry if it's going all crazy on you. But these are slightly different than the previous ones. I've seen those didn't have holes, they had marks on them, so these might be different. But they're metal, they're scale, I dig it. Then we've got this. Let me pop them open. Normally I prep everything and I just didn't open this thing. So our PE fret is just those things that go by the rear intakes and some very specific stuff. Sorry for the glare. I don't know what those little guys are. It's very different than any other Panzer IV PE I've had. And then the world's most adorable decal sheet. Three Balkenkreuz. Sort of a medium weight. Look how tiny. And that's all the sort of goody related stuff in this box. So the plastic starts off with our standard issue 
Panzer IV suspension sprues. So we've got two of those. Uh, you can only show this sprue so many times before you feel like Groundhog Day, but we'll check the fidelity of the molds, see how they're holding up. These bogies look fine. Still superior to the Tamiya ones have like even this mounting point molded in. Pay attention to this light, by the way, because this is great. You see that little thing hanging off the back? On the talc panzer I made, that was a separate piece, and they had you gluing that on. And that's one of those times where the engineering doesn't make any sense, because a part that small, I mean, this is my finger for crying out loud, to clean that up and to get it glued on correctly is near impossible. So to have it molded on is much, much more preferable. Um, these are for the, the bogies, different... Um, eras of Panzer IVs had different little whatever the hell those are on the bogies, as well as these things go on bogies. The idler looks pretty good. I can't tell if there's wells there or not. There should be. Some hatches. I'm not sure how much of this is used. I think it's the idler adjuster stuff will be used. The wheels look fine. There's just so many Panzer IV variants that this sprue is just everywhere. But nothing looks bad on it. And with that, we also had two of these. So we've got a bunch of return rollers and caps for the wheels here and covers for the um, drive sprocket and the sprockets themselves. Which look pretty good. Here's uh, the armored covers for the final drives I was talking about. It seems different than I was used to. Bump stops in two pieces. All still looks pretty clean. But that's nothing new. We've seen that a million times. All right. So this guy is listed as 135th Brumbear Early. So my assumption would be that this has been in the uh, kits since basically the second version. Here we've got the two antennas, the Schutzen brackets. Rear mud flaps looking pretty crisp. Spare wheel holders, parts of the muffler. This has to do with the vents on the engine deck. This stuff all looks really clean. The kind of dragon screws I like seeing. I get a little concerned because that the last dragon one I did had the plastic seemed a little thinner, so I'm trying to keep an eye out to see if they're, they've changed that recipe at all. The brackets all seem as close to scale as they're going to get, if not in perfect scale. And all the little parts seem in good shape and very, very clean. I like that antenna. Next one is listed as, let's see, 135th Brumbear Early with Zimmerit. So, I would assume then, because I couldn't really gauge from the box whether or not this was an early or not, because it just says it's basically a buffet's bargain, but um, it's weird though. It says with Zimmerit, but nothing on here appears to have Zimmerit. Oh, no, nope, those do. It's very fine though. So those have Zim on them. That one's a little bent. But like, or am I looking at this backwards, perhaps? Yup. Sorry about that. So here's a rear plate with Zim. This looks like maybe a, a lower front plate. Some hatches with Zim. Everything's got Zim right on it. Front plate. I like the Zim. It's... I like the level. It's not as low as it is on that Tiger mid, but it's not quite as deep as it is on the Tiger late. 
So I think that's a good level. Yeah, it's on every piece of this. I can't believe I couldn't see it. <laughs> Sorry about that, people. We all make mistakes. Yep, I like the Zimmerit on this. Could be my favorite Zim so far. And everything small seems to be good. And the Zimmerit looks pretty irregular. I, I've seen other guys review the other Zimmerit and Brum Bears, and it seems like the same sprues. So I assume we'll use a lot of that, if not all of it. And then we got this thing. So this guy is labeled as another early Brum Bear sprue. So there we've got fenders. Diamond plate seems pretty good, or anti-slip, whatever you want to call it. It's on both. So here are the exact parts we were just looking at without Zim, so you end up with almost enough parts to build another Brum Bear. I'm going to assume that the upper plate won't have Zimmerin on it, so we'll probably use him. And the gun parts. There's your actual barrel. Pretty nice. Bunch of grab handles. Everything on here looks super modern, very clean, not flashy. Very cool. This was a vehicle that I... I'm glad I got sent one to review because I wanted one, but I just hadn't gotten one yet. When I first started building armor, I, I kind of scoffed at people who were building all kinds of Panzer IV variants, but it's sort of addictive. So here's a couple little sprues all molded together. We've got our standard jack. I apologize for not knowing the weight classification, but they do have them, and I can't think of it off the top of my head. But it's on your, your mid-range vehicles, this guy. That looks, you know... Near is perfect to me. Rarely have I built a dragon kit and been like, man, that jack just wasn't up to par. No, they're all pretty good. And here we've got some convoy lights, another antenna, and some teeny little fiddly parts. Not really sure what these are, to be honest with you. And then what I assume are spare wheels. Four of them. Well, normally, some of the spare wheels have, like, uh, teeth in here. These don't. But Brumbers, in general, had at least a couple of spares on the uh, rear, so... Then we have... 135th Brumbear, that's all it says, so I'm going to assume this is the interior sprue for every one of these that's ever been made. That's nice. It's smooth as a you know, babies, whatever, but it's, uh, I like the thickness of it. That one's a little thicker. These are interior plates. It's strange that they don't have texture. You should really mount the gun. That looks like a seat back. Right here. Elevation wheel. Something really small there. Yeah, these modern dragon guns, they always look really good. There's some breech parts. So different. Just having built a Stug 3, these are very different parts than I'm used to seeing. Very cool, though. Very modern sprue. Then we've got... That looks like a Panzer IV sprue. 135th Panzer IV. So, we're not going to use a ton of this stuff. And especially, I will point out, a slide-molded, you know, 75mm barrel. Hopefully, whenever I see something like this, I'm like, man, I hope I can find a good use for a dragon 
you know, slide molded barrel because there's a muzzle brake here too. There's part of it and there's the other part. So I've got the whole Panzer IV gun. Now in theory, there will be like a Tamiya build at some point or something that needs upgrading and I will have it. Otherwise it'll just end up in the spares box and I won't remember it's there. So these parts are great. Um, I don't think we need many of them though. Pretty sure we don't. I'm actually quite curious what it was that made Dragon put this in there. But, you know, it looks crisp. I'm going to assume this is in the uh, the H's and the, the J's that I have. So there's a very nice Panzer Force group. This guy, which looks again, oh, it's bent something. Panzer IV. So this would be uh, engine deck stuff and the rear plate, but oh, and the exhaust. Yeah, that's probably why this is here. But then we also have Panzer IV on vehicle tools. Yeah, lots of exhaust parts, that's probably why. Uh, rear mud flaps. Engine deck covers, tiny little fiddly parts. Man, these sprues are nice. More tools. Not entirely sure that could be for spare tracks. I haven't done a Dragon later Panzer IV yet. I, I'm just buried uh, with other builds, so I'd like to though. But so I, I assume you won't use a whole lot of this, but it does look really good, and you'll have a ton of Panzer IV spares. Got a couple more little ones. Uh, Panzer IV G with Zim. So I've got a few Zimmerated Panzer IV parts. Interesting. It's, this is... Oh, good lord. This is add-on armor with Zimmerit on it. A little bit shallower, I feel, than the other stuff. Uh, but specifically for the Panzer IV G, which is what this kit is. Basically, is a G converted to a Brumbear, so that makes a lot of sense. Very nice. So there's some, a few rear parts and a few up-armored front parts. Interesting little sprue. And then... How weird is that? <laughs> this is the strangest thing I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> this is literally um, this with this part cut off. So... I'm trying to go through why Dragon would do that, because, I mean, this is clearly, um, and they're, they're the same, both have Zimmerit on them, but I mean, this is clearly the the front, you know, I believe that's the Glacis, the front, you know, driver's slit and, and ball machine gun, and then this looks like a lower, um, a lower front hull. No tank would have two of those, right? Like, why not? Maybe, maybe, maybe. You need two of this, or two of this, but there's no way you need two of these two. So that's just super weird, and it's just weird to see if they just cut right through the words. <laughs> Gee, Zimmerit. Um, you know, but the same sprue, it's a T sprue. That's a little weird, but I'm gonna, yeah, it's gotta be that you need two of these two things, so. There's that. We've got a few more tiny ones. This little guy, 135th Brumbear. We've got what I assume is a hatch for the top. Our toolbox, which I thought we already saw one of these. Jack block. Still a little smooth in the side there, Dragon. 
some tools, a little crowbar action, some really tiny stuff there. I'm not even sure how they want you to remove those, because it goes straight from a sprue gate to part. There's really no, like, uh, that long rectangular part, that's where I always cut, and these don't even have that. So it's a real small brum bear sprue, essentially toolbox jack. These are uh, fender supports, basically, on a Panzer IV. Very modern, very clean. Not real sure what all that is, but this guy, I have about a thousand of these. This is an MG34, um, a bipod open and closed, and then the top part where the you close it when you load it. This one's actually slightly different. It doesn't have the mounting for the, um, what do you call it? Where it goes in the shield, like on a stug, there's sometimes a, right where the sprue gate is actually, there's a thing that you can end up gluing it right to the shield. I thought I had one right here, but I can't seem to see it. So this is one form of a MG34, which is clearly cut from another sprue. And then another Zimmerit sprue. This is strange. Normally when they do these Zimmerit kits, you get one big sprue with all the zimmed parts. This is like the fourth one. So this is not labeled. Uh, it's actually another part of the T sprue. So it's been cut. So it could have originally been with that other one. Um, but so this is our front deck, our lower front, and then our rear plate again. It's strange to have that many Zimrit parts. But again, the Zim is at a nice level. Looks regular. I take it. So, the last few parts. Some clear bits. You've got a sight. You've got some standard periscopes. You know, they're as clear as they can be. They're a little brittle. They don't sand so well but they're fine. They're not quite as soft as some companies do, but you get used to them with Dragon. And the, the clear sight is bored out a little bit, so if you paint it, it looks pretty nice. And then we've got this guy, which is a scissors periscope. With hollowed out eyes. One more periscope, and it looks like another sight. So, as good as clear parts get. I'm not really a fan of the clear parts, but... So our hull tub. The Zim looks good. Um, yeah. yeah, I like that spot especially, where it kind of looks like they made a mess around this area here. Maybe it's a little shallower than it is on the uh, the rest of the kit. But the irregularity is fantastic. Fuel filler areas. Detail on the bottom is good. A little bit of marring there, but that shouldn't be an issue. Looks good to me. As they did with a lot of the later Panzer IVs, this stuff is already here. On the earlier super kits, you had to end up doing that yourself. And then the last stuff I have is the superstructure itself and the engine deck, which is all on one little screw together. So, got some Zim on the engine deck. Apart from that, not much to say. Very cleanly molded. Being such a major piece of the thing, that's good. And then our superstructure. Sorry, it's a little too long. It's shaking on me. I really like that. In the Zim. Got kind of a round shape around the gun. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah. Overall, that'll be roughly the size of the thing. All the Zimmer looks pretty good. What do I think about it? Um, 
I'd be real excited if it wasn't for the DS tracks, honestly. Um, there's not one sprue in there that wasn't full of really clean, really nice-looking parts. Um, it, it does seem nearly identical to every other Zimmerated Brum Bear that's come out. I'm not entirely sure if if this stuff is... You know, and I didn't do all of the research in the world, but I'm going to assume that something to do with this G conversion may have some slightly different armor in some place or some slightly different components somewhere. Um, you know, but it's it's basically exactly the same as the the other Zim kits, except this doesn't have magic tracks. So that's super disappointing because you could go on eBay and probably snag up. I've seen the like the mid with Zim for like thirty thirty five bucks on eBay all the time. Like it's not a, a rarity. I see it there. Um, so that's this kit with better tracks. So you know you make up your your mind there, but that's that's the direction I would go in. That being said, apart from the DS, this looks really, really sweet. Mm -hmm.